Hello everybody. Um, what I want to do with this image, which is the Ministry of Justice here in Manchester, is to apply a motion blur to it. Now, but I just want, don't want to be a random motion blur. I specifically want to follow the lines of the building. Now to do that, we're going to have to find out what the angles are that are in this building. And then we can use that angle, dial it into our motion blur dialog box, and everything will look fantastic. That's the theory. Let's see if it works in practice. Now, you need to find the angle. Now, what what you do is to go across to your toolbar over here and just mouse down here. And under the eyedropper will be the ruler tool. And the ruler tool is a very useful little thing for measuring things if you want to. It also measures angles. Now, if I just choose this corner point here of this balcony area, and drag across to there that's telling me just here that my A, my angle is 56.1 degrees 56.1 very useful to have so bearing that in mind and I'm going to leave that there and I'm not going to do anything else to this image I'm going to duplicate this you can either drag it mouse down drag it onto a new layer icon there we're going to call this one blur because that's what we're going to do to this I'm going to convert this to a smart object. Now, don't panic. Smart object, it just means that um, if we convert this to a smart object, we can apply this blur, but we can also go back in again uh, without uh, seriously affecting the quality of this uh, layer or image and re edit our blur. So, if you right click inside this highlighted area, just here will be convert to smart object. And you'll see all of a sudden we have this little doohickey appears in the corner down here to tell us that actually this layer is a smart object so we're just saving ourselves a hassle of going in and going out and calling up new layers to change the blur and things we can edit the blur within this layer now it's a smart object so let's go into filter we go into the blur part and you can see some are missing the field blur the iris blur and all those we just want the motion blur and we can see here we've got this dialog box and if you remember the angle we had before it was 56 degrees now you could turn around there if you make sure that's highlighted and click in 56 now ah, look what happens there we've got this blur happening within uh, our image let's just click OK and we've got quite an interesting thing going on there um, let's just click out because we've still got a little ruler showing up in there if we just click on the move tool that should disappear and that's to show you what it looks like before and after so we've got lots of interesting things happening there. Now we can use that. A very simple thing to do is to go straight in and think about a, a uh, blend mode. And there's overlay, soft light, and hard light. Hard light works quite well. If you look there, we've got light streaming off. Now if you want to, we can go back in and re-edit it. So I've just double clicked there on the motion blur. And while it's like this, I've taken things up again. So all of a sudden we've got this editable layer. Well, we can have less if you want to. But I think really just taking a bit more like that. That's interesting. We've got these lines running off here. See how they perfectly follow on the lines of the building because we check the angle with the ruler. And we click OK on that. That's working quite well. Let's just have a look at the blend modes again. So we just go back in and really overlay soft light, hard light. Let's have a look at those. Well, that's not too bad. There's only a bit showing. And I've got the scroll mouse activated in my preferences so I can actually scroll through these. But I think that works quite well. Now then, we've also, because we've converted to a smart filter, we've got this inbuilt mask. Let's just click on and off. You can see there, that's just applying a hard light blend mode. If we click in the mask there, we can show that's the applying the smart filter. So, if we choose a br soft brush, which is B for brush over here and then we just click on this little icon here because I want black and white and I want black to be my foreground color and I want to make sure that we are working in this mask area so click in it to make sure you get these little bounding corners that come around the outside I'm still working at 20% you can work at 30% don't forget to use your keyboard shortcut which is 1, 2, 3 up to naught, which is 100% because it's white, I'm going to paint in black. So hit the X key, that'll toggle things around. And I just want to take out some of this here. Let's just take this down to 20%. And you can see there, 
just by a bit of masking. If I alt click on this, you can actually see the masking, what we're doing there. Click on it again, I'll click again, I'll take it away again. And we've applied a directional motion blur perfectly over an image. Um, you might find that so you need to sort of uh, take some of that hard light blend mode out. Now, we've got the mask for the smart filter. We can also mask out the hard light blending mode. So if we just click in there, that'll add a mask. I know it's, you've got mass all over the place now. We're going to mask out some of that hard light blending mode, which is, is here. And if I just paint in here, you can see that's just taking off some of that hardness, which that blending mode is applying to the layers underneath. So you can actually fine tune the blending mode as well as fine tuning the filter blur, which is a sm uh, smart filter which was the motion blur just by converting this into by right clicking a smart object okay so all that flexibility built in you can fine tune don't forget you've got your passes to work with you can take that in and out as well we can create a stamped copy over the top so if i've got my top level highlight and just make sure that is shift alt control and e you maybe want to uh, multiply things to so darken things up around the edge. Uh, let's just control I on that mask there. Might want to add some density into there. Let's make sure we're on X, which is white, because we're painting onto a black mask. Just bring that down there like that. It's very exciting watching somebody paint in Photoshop, isn't it? So there, very simply, we've added some motion blur to an architectural image uh, by converting it into a smart object. We've then, on that layer, gone into our filter menu, chosen blur, which is just up here, remember that? Filter blur just gone across and we've chosen our motion blur on there. Because we're in a smart object, um, we've got the smart filter on it, including the motion blur, we've got a mask which we can paint through to remove some of the smart filtering, because we're in a blend mode, if I just click on that, which is a hard light, I can apply a mask and take out some of the blend mode. If I right click and then just disable this layer mask, you can see there it brightens things up again. So let's just go back in there and enable. So that's right click. If you want to disable the layer mask, just right click within the mask and you can disable it. You've got that cross that goes through there to show that it's disabled. Let's go back in again and enable it. So it's just taking down some of that blend mode, which is a hard light. Hard light is, is um, will add lightness to your highlights and density to, to your shadow areas. Um, so just knock that back by painting on with a bit of black. And then we've done a stamp copy, shift control, alt E, or shift alt control E, I should say. Uh, and then added a bit of density by having a multiply blend mode. And again, you can just see there, just to bulk that side of things up. It's all fine tunable. We can work on the opacity of all of them. So before you flatten this down, uh, I suggest take a snapshot um, and then come back into it and you can flatten it and play with it and work on the image. Okay, that's been another quick one. That's just been adding a directional motion blur into an architectural image and then using smart objects, smart filters and a bit of masking. Okay, nip across the maxbackphotos.com, see what I'm up to, lots of black and whites going on there at the moment. I've just redone the homepage. Uh, until the next time, of course, it's uh, bye for now.